Witam Was, ja nazywam się Dajt Muszyński, ten program to Furfan na ekranie, a dzisiaj jak widzicie jesteśmy na czerwonym dywanie, bo premierę ma film Back to Black, historia Amy Winehouse, czyli biografia tej słynnej piosenkarki. Na czerwonym dywanie pojawiają się gwiazdy, a ja zapraszam Was na spotkanie z reżyserką i brytyjską obsadą tego filmu. Posłuchajcie co mają do powiedzenia. When you were building your character, uh, what was most frightening? Showing the history of a beloved musician or building your voice to actually sound like her. I mean, I think it was kind of a, a, an amalgamation of the two, you know, you kind of can't have one without the other. We know and love Amy because of her songs and her songwriting ability and her voice, the way that she brought them to life. Um, but also because of who she was as a person, you know, we fell in love with her, that she wrote those songs herself because of the way that she experienced life. So I had to experience it in that way in order to tell this story properly. Writing this script for such a big person as Amy Winehouse was with such a colorful life, how do you decide what you're putting in the script and what you're putting out of it? You, you start with the songs and, you know, the songs, she lived her songs. So it's like, that's where the structure starts. Once you get those 10 songs, I think we're in the movie then it's like, okay, what life stories can then you hook on to those moments and to those lyrics? And then it's like massaging certain timescales to make it work as a movie narrative, because obviously we don't have that much time in order to tell such a panoramic story. But basically, if you can start with the start song structure, then uh, that's, it. that's the place. I want people to hear my voice. And just forget their troubles. <laughs> you gotta remember, I ain't no spy girl. Amy Winehouse! We only said goodbye, we would I died a hundred times. You go away. I wanna be remembered for just being me. Wy oglądacie Forfa na ekranie, my dzisiaj jesteśmy na premierze filmu Back to Black, historia Amy Winehouse. Ja spotkałem się z brytyjską obsadą tego filmu i zapytałem o twórcę głównej roli ojca, jak trudno było wcielić się w tą postać i czy dostał jakieś wskazówki no, od pierwowzoru. Posłuchajcie co odpowiedział. Well, I'm a father of four teenagers. So um, when I sat down to speak to Mitch, I was speaking to a man who'd lost his daughter and that's one of my um nightmare scenarios is to lose one of my children so i just played a father really i played a father and drawing on my own experiences as well as as well as talking to him and one of the experiences i have is that the experience of love worry um pride and the feeling that you never know if you're doing the right thing That's that's how I played him because that's how I think being a father is. Mitch and the family, Mitch was just a cab driver. The family was just a normal working class family. And they knew that their daughter was spiraling. But the only thing that kept her focused, the only thing that kept her on track was music. And Mitch was worried that if she lost the music, she would spiral even further. So when it came to the idea of going into rehab, the reason he didn't initially say go to rehab is because he thought she would lose her recording contract. And he wanted her to go back and keep the music going because it was the only thing that was keeping her alive. I, I just played a father who loved his daughter and was trying to do the right thing, but made mistakes, which is what I do every day. And I'm curious about your singing scenes in the beginning of the movie. Right. They're very good. Like, they, you, I haven't seen it yet. Were you a little bit afraid of those or it was for you just an acting lesson? Let's go with it. Uh, Mitch recorded Fly Me to the Moon for me so I could emulate his voice as much as I could. And then you just got to, acting's all of, one of the main qualities of acting is courage. You just got to go for it. So you spend a lot of time with each other, I can assume. We spent a few, yeah, we, we, we met up a few times and we texted and communicated. He sent me lots of photographs of his family, of his Jewish upbringing in the East End, because I come from the East End. And um, he was very candid and honest about um, dealing with the situation with Amy, with the addiction, with her fame. He was a very, very candid, very honest and very self-aware. 
how long were you looking for the main role, the main person that will embrace who Amy Winehouse was on the screen? Well, I would, I'd like to say it was a worldwide search that took uh, took months and months, but but no, because we had at our side the, 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 the wonderful best casting director ever, Nina Gold, and she found her reasonably quickly. She presented Sam with, with you know, a, a pool of girls, and but Marissa was sta- the standout pretty quickly. Uh, you know, when you know, you know, and, and, and Marissa looked down at the page, came up, and Sam said she saw Amy Winehouse there, and... Yeah, she she just came in so prepared. She just she just had it from the from the first line, and then when she sang as well, it was just it was almost like you felt a bit sorry for everyone else coming in because you know you, you had to see them, but we we knew. Marisa's portrayal of her is spellbinding. It was a massive thrill to me on on set just watching her go about her work and you know play, playing off that was. Uh, a real buzz. When you saw your uh, co-star dress up and with the tattoos, what was your fir- first reaction when you saw the metamorphose on the set? It was insane. So obviously, look, there's a, a ton of people that deserve credit for that. I mean, no one uh, more so than Marisa. But I think just just hearing her vocals for the first time was like one one of my favorite memories of this of this job. So which song was the hardest actually to pin down the her voice and the temper? I think the hardest Amy Winehouse song technically is Tears Dry on Their Own. There's just a huge range in it and a massive tempo and we did it with a big dance number. So, well, no, not dance number, <laughs> but you know, like it's a performance. So like I'm moving around, doing the, it, that was technically the most difficult, so. Um, and the most joyful for you? Um, it was probably I Heard Love Is Blind because it's also, she's singing with the guitar and it's a very poignant moment in her life. She's on the precipice of being mm-hmm. recognized for the incredible work that she's done with the Frank album. Um, she's healthy and yeah, I think that that was my favorite version. To, to perform. Ready? We only sing goodbye when I die. I don't write songs to be famous. You go I write songs because I've got to make something good out of something bad. And Wyglądacie furfa na ekranie, a my dzisiaj jesteśmy na czerwonym dywanie, bo premierę ma Back to Black, historia Amy Winehouse. Zapytałem reżyserkę, czy sugerowanie tego, co stało się z Amy pod koniec jej życia, widzą na podstawie plotek, nie jest błędem. Posłuchajcie, co odpowiedziała. I think that is what I do, actually. I'd like to go separate and against what you're saying. I don't think it feels like there's a finger pointing so much as just a sense that she's recognizing, you know, she's in this big house and she's feeling a little lost and she's feeling that she's, you know, where is she in her life? And it's sort of an ambiguous ending. It's, I'm not saying that that is the moment even. It's kind of left open, but there's, you know, a, a sense that it could be the moment. So it's not really finger pointing all that that was the trigger, but it's just reminding us about the love story that, you know, the whole entire album of Back to Black is based around by sort of bringing back Blake into that moment. I guess uh, just just the very fact that, because we're not like tabloids or, you know, it's not like a, a, a press run, you know, it, it, we, we have a chance to just sort of be a bit more uh, in depth, you know, and, and just spend a bit more time with with, with getting into the, the, the ins and outs. There's obviously the version that's out there Amy Winehouse was like she was fiercely unique and herself, and I don't think anyone was ever going to walk all over her. So there had to, there had to be something. There had to be something that 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 wasn't necessarily out there in the uh, public domain, um, and that's what the, our script gave us a chance to do. That's what Sam gave me the chance to do. That's what my meeting with Blake informed me. Uh, I found him to be very sincere, very honest, especially when he spoke about Amy. And so that's that's what I wanted to bring across. The album's number one around the world. The highest charting album from a British female artist in the US 
ever. I don't think I was put on this earth just to sing. Me. I want to be a wife. I want to be a mum. Probably run off with someone famous anyway. You're my heartbeat. You're my soul. I love you. And my tears dry. I don't bang out tenets by lunch. I need to live my songs. So that's what I'm going to go and do. Ready? For fun na ekranie.